Hello to all students. In this video lecture, we are going to discuss kidney stones. Kidney stone is also known as nephrolithiasis or urolithiasis. Kidney stone is the formation of stones inside the urinary system, either inside a kidney or inside the urinary system. If the stones are present inside the kidney, then this condition is called nephrolithiasis. But if the stone has transferred from kidney to ureter or urinary bladder, then it is known as urolithiasis. Stones are usually deposits of minerals or salts inside the urinary system. There are four different types of kidney stones. Let's discuss these types of stones one by one in detail. The first type of kidney stone are calcium stones. Calcium stones are usually found in 60 to 80 percent in human bodies. These stones have irregular shape like a flower and they are made up of calcium oxalate and calcium phosphate. These two salts contribute in the formation of calcium stones. There are certain causes for the formation of these stones. Number one, dehydration. There is a shortage of water inside the body and the urine has been concentrated and salts present inside the urine precipitates in, into crystals and these crystals join together to form a stone, hard deposit. Low urine output also leads to the formation of these type of stones high sodium intake like sodium chloride or other foods which contain high sodium content can also lead to the formation of these type of stones. High oxalate intake. There are certain foods like okra, tomatoes and some other vegetables and fruits which contain high amount of oxalate. These oxalates can be deposited inside the kidney and results in the formation of calcium oxalate stones. High protein intake, especially meat or pulses can also lead to the formation of these type of stones with less intake of water. The second type of stones are uric acid stones which usually contribute 10% of all the stones. These stones are usually round in shape. These stones are produced as a result of high protein diet which include red meat and pulses. Obesity which can lead to type 2 diabetes and type 2 diabetes can lead to the formation of stones inside the body and metabolic syndrome during which certain metabolites are accumulated in the body and especially the uric acid can accumulate inside the surface of kidney for the and results in the formation of uric acid stones. There are certain genetic factors which can also lead because even if you are taking very good diet and you are also healthy person and you are taking exercise but at the same time if you have a genes for the formation of stones which you got from your ancestors or your parents or grandparents then this genetic factor will lead towards formation of stones even if you are a healthy person. The third type of stones are struvite stones. Struvite stones are 5 to 7 percent. These stones are usually mostly found in females body due to the infection of UTI, urinary tract infection which is caused by certain bacteria. These bacteria can lead to the formation of this type of stones which are known as struvite stone. The four type of stone are cysteine uh, stones. They are 1 to 3 percent stones of all type of stones. This, these type of stones are triangular in shape and these stones are caused by a condition known as cystinuria. In this condition, a patient has more amino acid, cysteine, in their urine. 
which can accumulate inside the kidney or urinary system resulting in the formation of cystine stones. Now let's look at the urinary system to understand the location of the stones. So if you look at this diagram, this is a kidney. It has a outermost surface which is known as renal cortex and inner surface which is renal medulla and uh, towards the um, concave side there is a funnel shaped structure which is known as pelvis. So usually stones are formed in this region but certain stones are also formed in the medullary region. Some stones are larger while other stones are smaller. These stones can also move from kidney into ureter and from ureter into urinary bladder and can block the passage of the urine and also cause infection or bleeding in the urinary tract. Usually small stones can pass easily from the urinary system and can move, up, move out of your body. But the larger stones cannot pass through urinary system. They have to be removed surgically or by other techniques. So how do we know that if a person has kidney stones? So there are certain symptoms which help us to identify that there are kidney stones. Kidneys are usually located on the dorsal side, which is back side of the body, on both sides of vertebral column, just below the last two ribs of our body, which are known as floating ribs. So the first and the most important symptom is pain, which starts from on this region and moves towards, which is abdomen, lower abdomen, and move towards the lower back. So the first symptom is sharp and severe pain in abdomen which moves towards lower back. This is the most and important symptom of kidney stone. And sometimes there is a blood in urine. You see that your urine has different color which is brown or pink or some other color which can also indicate that there is a movement of the stone inside the kidney which is causing infection or bleeding with, due to which the color of the urine has been changed then we have to check out whether the stones are present inside the kidney or not. Nausea and vomiting is also the major symptom of uh, uh, kidney stones and painful urination. These symptoms uh, will allow, uh, help us to understand that there, is, there could be a stone inside the kidney but we have to diagnose with certain tests like x-ray, ultrasound, blood test or urine analysis which can be done in a routine laboratory techniques. After confirmation from the, these tests, uh, a surgeon or a physician can diagnose that a patient or person has kidney stones. After that, we have to treat it. There are certain different uh, plans which are used to treat kidney stones. Number one, drinking plenty of water so that smaller or medium stones can be washed away from the kidney or urinary system with the help of water. But not all the stones can be removed by drinking plenty of water. Then there are pain relievers like Advil, Tylenol, Panadol or etc. which helps to reduce the pain caused by these stones. There is also medical therapy in which certain medications are administ administered through veins or through oral route to remove the kidney stones. If not, if medical therapy is not working, then we have to go towards extracorporeal short, short wave lithotripsy. In this technique, short waves, a heavy amount of x-rays are uh, bombarded at the stones present inside the kidney and kidney stones uh, turns into sand like particles which are then passed through urinary system and from urinary system into outside the body. And if the stones are too many and uh, very large which cannot be treated with all these methods then surgery is usually performed open surgery in which kidney is opened and uh, larger stones are removed by the surgical hands. There is also a new technology in which scope with the camera is used to remove stones. 
camera and scope is uh, inserted into the urinary system through urinary bladder to ure ureter and into the kidney and the stones if there are not too many stones one or two or couple of stones which are present in the hilus region or in the pelvis region then these stones can be removed by using a scope that's all for today and hopefully see you in the next lecture until then bye